My name is Fatih Özbaram. I'm producer on Robinson. Okay. So tell us a bit about, you know, a, 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 brief, a brief description of the game. What's the game about? Okay, Robinson the Journey is a, a VR exclusive sci-fi adventure. It's about a boy who crash lands on an unknown planet that reassembles Earth in its prehistoric era. It's about it's filled with dinosaurs, of course. We like dinosaurs. You know, the original concept for Robinson is actually based on the 70s. Back then, in the 70s, people had the concept, there was the concept of dinosaurs in space. And Robinson the Journey is a modern take on that. That's okay. where the inspiration comes from. Okay. So, the, the game, can you tell us? Uh, what kind uh, what kind of game is it's an okay. exploration game action game adventure game it's an exploration game it's about exploring unique locations and in order to explore them you have to walk climb and in order to survive you have to scan environment meaning animals to understand if they're a threat if they are a danger to you or if they're friendly dinosaurs that you can interact with so it's a combination of this and of course all together tied with a dino, uh, with a appealing or compelling story. How long it will be? <laughs> That's a tricky question yeah. and let me explain this what I mean by that. It really depends how you play. If you have already a VR experience probably the, the experience will be a bit faster because you already had this one more moment but if you are new to VR probably you will, your experience will be longer. You will take your time to enjoy all the moments around you right and if you especially care about the storyline you want to scan all the creatures, you want to experience all these details, you want to solve all the puzzles that the game provides. So it can be an experience of hours, if you want. So the game will have, let's say, you can replay it and to, to find, you know, more hidden, sure. there are coll collective hidden objects sure. that will encourage you to, to play once again and again. Sure. So as you have seen in the demo, there was a reason why you scanned, but you didn't see what you have done with this information. There will be ways to discover and explore this information right and there will be reasons to go back because you haven't either scanned a creature that you need to complete your collection or because you haven't solved the puzzle or because you still need to unlock our trophies so in the games there will be achievements that you have to unlock and they will create replay value for you so the world the game world will be fully open you can explore you can go everywhere you want that's correct. The game uh, is sandbox. It's, it, in, uh, it features self-contained levels and you can discover and explore them in the order you want. So if you want to go to this level first, you go there first. The, the important thing here to mention is there is an overall progression of the game. What it means is the game starts like safe, happy daylight and it becomes more and more dark as you proceed in the game. And then at the end it's really dark and mysterious. Okay. And you will encounter some really, really dangerous creatures there. Okay. So, and uh, the, the game does the game have you know uh, a day-night cycle? There is. It's not a dynamic day-night cycle, but there is like some transition from day to night. Okay. Yeah. The climbing system is the same the, as your other game, the climb. Okay. Well, it's more simplified. So it doesn't have like stamina. It doesn't have like chalk. It's more simplified because. The purpose of climbing is really to get to from A to B to in order to explore this unique element in this place. It's more a simplified climbing mechanic. The, in, the interesting thing is the climbing mechanics we had first for Robinson and then people said, hey, let's do a game based on climbing. So we added more gameplay to that. That's where we end up with the climb. But the original climbing mechanics are actually based from, are actually from Robinson. It's hard to reach the, the minimum FPS. With the of so PlayStation VR requires you 60 frames per second uh, if, and 120 frames per second if you do reprojection, right? Per eye it's 60 frames per second. And in order to achieve this, you have to have a strong technology. So what we did is, we, I mean we are into VR since two years now. We did two tech demos last year, we shipped the climb already. This experience helped us to optimize our technology engine. So we, we optimized in order to get the performance we need to achieve for an experience like this. Uh, how did the, the idea to develop the game start? You know, it's something that you have thought before VR existed or did you create it specifically for VR? There are two, uh, two reasons how we, or two ways to explain this. The first one is, as I explained previously, you know, this concept of dinosaurs in space in the 17th, that's inspired us. But we were watching this video of NASA going to Mars and we said, hey, the spirit of exploration, 
that's what VR is made for. You, you, it, VR is a great platform to, for, to convey the sense of scale, right? You are there, you are present, and it's an immersive experience, a transportive experience. We said, so this is the basic human motivation to explore the un unknowns, right? That's the one reason. And the second reason is, we said, hey, in VR, Kraling is known for beautiful worlds. So let's do a beautiful world, let's have a compelling story, and let's have dinosaurs. So this is really a combination of the 70s concepts, the NASA video, as well as what we wanted to do in VR. So the concept was developed specifically for VR. It wasn't a concept that we were thinking to release on PC. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for controlling the game, right now you are using standard gamepad control. Uh, what kind of options uh, users can have on the gamepad? Let's say some users want to use comfort mode, with mode, uh, what can they, how can they play the So game? the game will be released with a default movement scheme. I mean, the movement scheme you have experienced in the demo is still work in progress. We are doing, all, we are running a lot of playtest sessions to have the most comfortable experience, but we will give players some options. As an example, they will be able to turn on or off strafing. They will be able uh, to define how the snap rotation will look. If it's an incremental one, or if they prefer like 90 degree rotation, they can customize all of this themselves. Okay. Any chances to have future support for motion controllers? Well, the game will, re will be released in October with DualShock 4 co uh, support, and who knows what the future brings. <laughs> okay. Was it uh, really challenging to, to, build, uh, to build this kind of game from, you know, from the ground to specifically for, for VR? It's, it's different to design a game for VR than designing a game for traditional gameplay? There are some challenges, of course. One of them being, as an example, in traditional games, you can control what the player should look at with cutscenes, right? In yeah. VR, that's not possible. Because the player can look at any direction he wants, any time. So, the controller is, the, the controls are on the player. But you need to, so it requires you to create intensives. So sound is really important. As an example, to make a player look behind him, you need to have a bird and the sound really close so that he looks around, right? That's important. Then, of course, move movement, I mean, you need to, if movement is uncontrolled, it can create physical discomfort. So what we did is, we, we said, okay, this is working for the majority of the player. You need to make sure that movement works, especially if you want to create a real game experience. Without that, you would have a, you, with limited movement, you wouldn't have a real game. It would feel more like a demo, right? But we want to achieve a real game. That's why we have movement, and that's our take on movement. So I see that Crytek is, is betting heavily on, on VR, you know, with Robinson, the client, uh, how do you feel about, do you think VR is here to, to stay this time? So we are not only doing VR, there are still traditional games in development, yeah. but we know for, from our business partners that we have one of the biggest VR team on this planet. And with Prime 5 as an example, we added native support to our engine. So any developer can take our uh, engine and develop a VR experience. So yes, to come back to your question, VR is here to stay here. I mean, there are a lot of big names investing into VR. It's not only Crytek, there are more big names that are building experience for VR at this moment. So I think the success depends on three factors. One of them being having comfortable experiences so that nobody feels sick. The second one is strong portfolio. The more, the better, I mean, the more diversity we get in the portfolio, the more games we get into VR, the more people will go and buy a headset, right? And the third factor is the pricing. I think, I mean, the initial price is a barrier. At the moment, it feels like expensive to most of the people. But I think over time, the technology will become affordable for the majority of the people. And a combination of this will make we are successful this time. I mean, you know, we are isn't something that is discussed today. It was discussed 20 years ago already. But now it's powerful enough to enable us to create like experience like Robinson. I think it's now here. It will go slowly but surely. Okay. When is it going to be released? It's going to be... In, uh, it's a day one release. Day it one? will be available in October 2016. I have a question, but I don't know if you can fax. <laughs> but uh, we know uh, PlayStation is making another... a new version of his... PlayStation New? PlayStation New, yeah. So How we affect... So the experience, the, the, I mean, what I mean by that is the user experience will be the same. It will be the same game content, but Neo gives us some ways to have a bit better resolution. 
so the quality will be a bit better on new, but the experience will be the same. Okay, so so the game content won't change. It's just the setup of LODs. TryEngine will scale depending. TryEngine scales very well across platforms. Okay, we have seen in, in the demo some kind of techniques with the. Some object, objects. The LODs, LODs, yeah. yeah. It's like streaming in and streaming out assets. It's, yes. a, it's a technique for performance. Exactly. Yeah. That's in order to hit this 60 slash 100 frames per second. That's how you guarantee performance, constant performance, constant per, uh, frames per second. That's our technique. It's it's challenging, yes, but we believe we have a game that is believable. I, I mean, a world that is believable, and it it still represents the Crytek visual fidelity. That's what we believe in. And for Neo, it, they would be less obvious because there you could apply a different LOD setup. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you guys, thank you, thank you for your time and your interest in Robinson. Thank you. Thank you.